Well, this sermon is in honor of July. I didn't preach it last Sunday because it was too far away from Fourth of July. And so now we're still sort of in the holiday, in the, in the weekend, the holiday weekend. But when I, when I, when I preached last, uh, last year on Fourth of July, I paid a my And I was going to do that this morning, but I, I thought, no, it's already past Fourth of July, so. But I did, I painted it right away. The white's already there. Anyway, this is the 244th anniversary of the greatest nation that was ever known in mankind. Seriously, it is. Second Chronicles 7.14 says, If my people, who are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and forgive their sin and will heal their land. Would you bow your heads with me? Dear Lord, we thank you this morning that we still have a God in heaven and we still have people that worship and praise you, the one true God. And we know this land needs healing, Lord. And we pray that you will accomplish that healing in Jesus' name. Amen. So what God has done, he created a new nation. God created this nation where people didn't have to be subject to a king. There was freedom. It was started in freedom. A new nation where people could worship God in their own way. Religious freedom because in the old world the government dictated what church people could belong to and how they worshipped. And why did he do that? Because churches in this nation have sent thousands of missionaries to nations where religion had drawn people away from God. He established this nation. He knew there would be missionaries coming from this nation, going into all the world. Because churches in this nation sent thousands of missionaries into places where paganism was the rule. God created this nation, <clears throat> a place where back to the Bible movements could flourish. Movements like the early Methodism with circuit riding preachers. Movements like the holiness and Pentecostal movements that brought back people back to basic Bible believing faith. This nation has been enormously blessed this nation had the first man on the moon in 1969. First flight in 1903. The Model T Ford in 1908. Before that there were cars, but only rich people could drive or could afford them. And that brought the car to common people. And common people back then were mostly farmers or house factory workers. The first nuclear re reactor in 1942. The transoceanic cable, cable communication of 1858 all came out of this nation. I'm going to skip down a little bit because I think you need to know all this stuff. The modern submarine in 1900 came out of this nation. The Panama Canal, 1914. Project that dwarfed the problems in building the Seuss Canal for or any other canal, the U.S. accomplished what the French couldn't do and provided easy access between the Atlantic and Pacific. It was an incredible engineering obstacle, and there was disease down there. But the U.S. achievement accommodates close to 15,000 ships passing through there every year, and. Uh, the first machine gun in 1860. I don't know if you think that's a wonderful thing, but if you're defending your country with it, it is. Cell phones came from this nation in 1973. The internet came from this nation in 1985. With all our accomplishments, we have had our faults. Slavery was with us from the beginning until 1863 
Emancipation Proclamation, racism, even in the church, it still exists. Racism is an attitude. It's ungodly and it's sinful. Hatred and violence in the cities. Hatred is, is a sin. If you hate someone, even if you don't express it in some way, it's a sin that you harbor. In your heart, it's a sin. Alphabet movements, BLM and Antifa and LGB, whatever, and CRT and all these others, they're socialist, Marxist, by their own admission, they are haters by their actions. Violence, looting, burning. They're against everything that Christians hold sacred and dear. Marxism is against the Christian faith. They're against the nuclear family. They're against the freedom that we enjoy and that made this country great. My, my button is working. You just have to say amen on your own power. <laughs> Proverbs 14, 34, righteousness exalts a nation, but sin, sin condemns any people. Sin follows people. Where people go, sin is there too. The nation started in righteousness, but sin was right there too, because people were there. The Declaration of Independence, the first sentence refers to the people's independence, to which it says the laws of nature and of nature's God entitle them. Second paragraph begins with a self-evident truth that all men are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights. According to the Declaration, our rights are not from man or government, they are from God. I had to leave a space there. The final paragraph, which concludes with people's demand for independence, begins with an appeal to the Supreme Judge of the world for the rectitude, that is moral correctness, of our intentions. In other words, they were not depending on themselves for getting this right. They were depending on God. The declaration closes with a final sentence stating that the bold demand was being made with a firm reliance on the protection of divine providence. But sin condemns any people. The abortion clock is up to pretty near 66,000. Since 1973, one out of every 66 deaths in the world is an American abortion. One out of every four deaths in America. One out of every four, 25% is an American abortion. Half of the deaths in the world are from abortions. Half. Abortion is the leading cause of death in the world. It kills as many people as all the other causes of death combined. We have lost more Americans through abortions. 64 times more than we did in all of our wars. The 12 wars combined. These are staggering statistics. The world kills more people through abortion that all of the deaths in the America, in America combined, 22 times as many. The D-Day invasion of France, World War II, was the bloodiest in history. There were 53,714 Allied soldiers killed in the Battle of Normandy, yet our world kills more people than that in just nine hours through abortion. America has had, has lost 593 soldiers in its first year of fighting in Iraq. The world, however, kills more people than that in just six minutes through abortions. Six minutes. So what is God doing? He's watching. Murdering babies, home.
homosexuality, this new gender madness that's going on. This is an excerpt from an alpha author, Matt Slick, and he starts with Genesis 1, 27 and 28. God created man in his own image, in the image of God, he created, he created him. Male and female, he created them. God blessed him, and God said to him, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and rule over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the sky and over every living thing that moves on the earth. In those two verses, he, the author continues, we have a scriptural basis for why homosexuality is wrong. There are two main reasons. It goes against the creative order and it nullifies the dominion mandate. Fornication is the act of sexual relations outside of marriage. Now someone who affirms LGBT might say that once homosexuals are married, it's no longer fornication. But the fact is homosexual promiscuity is hugely pro problematic. Consider this information about male homosexual promiscuity. 28% Homosexual men have had more than 1,000 partners. Did you know that? 28%. Bell and Weinberg reported evidence of widespread sexual compulsion among homosexual men. 83% of the homosexual men surveyed estimated they had sex with 50 or more partners in their lifetime. 83%. 43% estimated they had sex with 500 or more partners, and 28% with 1,000 or more. Amazing. And that's why Sodom was destroyed. Furthermore, marriage is defined and ordained by God as between a man and a man. father and his mother and be joined to his wife and they shall become one flesh and the man and his wife were both naked and were not ashamed in Leviticus 18 22 do not have sexual relations with a man as one does with a woman that is detestable Romans 1 21 27 for although they knew God they neither glorified him as God nor gave thanks to him. But their thinking became futile and their foolish hearts were darkened. Although they claimed to be wise, they became fools and exchanged the glory of the immortal God for images made to look like mortal human beings and birds and animals and reptiles. Therefore, God gave them over to the sinful desires of their hearts to sexual impurity the degrading of their bodies with one another. They exchanged the truth about God for a lie and worshiped and served created things rather than the Creator who is forever praised. Amen. Verse 26. Because of this, God gave them over to shameful lust. Even their women exchanged natural sexual relations for unnatural ones. In the same way, the men also abandoned natural relations with women and were informed with lust for one another. Men committed shameful acts with other men and received in themselves the due penalty for their error. God calls homosexual, homosexuality detestable, and he calls it error. In other words, it's wrong. But this country has embraced it. It's wrong. It's detestable to God this country and certain churches <clears throat> embrace that. Psalm 33, 10 to 22, the Lord foils the plans of the nations. He thwarts the purposes of the people. But the plans of the Lord stand firm forever. The purposes of his heart through all generations. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. The people he chose for his, his inheritance. From heaven the Lord looks down and sees all mankind. From his dwelling place he watches all who live on earth. 
He who forms the hearts of all, who considers everything they do. No king is saved by the size of his army. No warrior escapes by his great strength. A horse is a vain hope for deliverance. Despite all its great strength, it cannot save. But the eyes of the Lord are on those who fear him, on those whose hope is in his unfailing love. His eyes are on us. He's watching. He's watching. To deliver them from death and keep them alive in famine, we wait and hope for the Lord. He's our help and our shield. In him our hearts rejoice, for we trust in his holy name. May your unfailing love be with us, Lord, even as we put our hope in you. If I was preaching this in Canada, they would arrest me. If I preached about, if I, in Australia, they would arrest me. I would go to jail. What's God doing? He's waiting. He's watching. And he's waiting, Isaiah 30 and 18. Yet the Lord longs to be gracious to you. Therefore, he will rise up to show you compassion for the Lord is the God of justice. Blessed are all who wait for him. So God is longing, waiting with desire, waiting with unbelievable patience. It's a good thing none of us is God. We would terminate the experiment a long time ago. None of us have the patience that he has. He's longing. But his patience will have an end. His patience had an end in the days of Noah. His patience had an end in the days of Nebuchadnezzar. So what will God do? Heal or destroy? It all depends on the original verse. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven, I will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. This land needs a healing. These words were spoken to Solomon by God himself on the occasion of the building of the temple. Solomon did not keep the faith. The people did not humble themselves. The healing did not come. Destruction came. Nebuchadnezzar came. Broke down the walls, destroyed the temple, carried the people off to Babylon. The Assyrian captivity came first, and then the Babylonian captivity, because they did not humble themselves. They did not take that advantage. They didn't do it. They kept worshiping Baal and Chemosh and Moloch and Asherah. Because they worshiped the people of the, the gods of the people around them. They worshiped Baal by murdering infant children, burning them alive in a fire. They worshiped Asherah with sodomy and other perversions at the shrines of Asherah. And every place there was a shrine for Baal, there was a shrine for Asherah. Do we have an expiration date? Will the nation repent? We cherish this nation. It's still the greatest ever, but it could be so much better if people hadn't gone on tangent away from God. God created a beautiful, perfect world. The first people contaminated it with their sin. He used his people to create the most awesome nation that ever existed. He used Christian believers to form this nation. It was founded on principles, Judeo-Christian principles. It was founded on pleasing God. In the days of Noah, people had completely rebelled against God. The earth was filled with violence, it says. And I have an idea that was also filled with fornication and sodomy. I have an idea that it probably was because people leaned towards that. 
the wrath of God came as it, and they were destroyed, but for a tiny, a tiny remnant of eight people. Abraham was called out of a culture of idolatry. He obeyed God and went where God sent him. He believed God and his credit and his righteousness. Abraham's grandson Jacob would have 12 sons, the 12 tribes that became of the Jewish people. Right and wrong, in other words, how to please God, came from God through the Jewish nation. God gave Moses the law. It was written on stone. Right it was, is what pleases God. Wrong is what displeases God. That's the heart and soul of what's right and wrong, not all this stuff that people are trying to do today. Right is what pleases God. Wrong is what displeases God. It's not what pleases us. It has nothing to do with that. People in their rebellion have decided for themselves what is right and wrong. They decided for themselves. They're still deciding for themselves. Well, I think thus and so. Quote a scripture to them. Well, I don't think that way. They cling on to their own notions. And their notions keep changing. Proverbs 14, 12. There is a way that appears to be right, but in the end it leads to death. Satan is the deceiver. He's the father of all lies. He's bent on the destruction of anything that pleases God. His tactic is to entice people to practice things that please themselves. This nation that we cherish, this nation that man died for in the Revolutionary War, the union that men died for in the Civil War was founded on Jehovah Christian principles, founded on religious freedom, not religious tyranny. Sadly, our very core is being threatened. People of faith are thought of as bigots. The gay agenda has crept into the mainstream of our culture. Mainstream. Abortion is cherished by the left. We have violent demonstrations in the city streets and on college campuses. None of these things are godly. Smash and grab with impunity, no penalty. And those who try to stop them get arrested. We live in a murder nation. We live in a society where anything goes. Notions of right and wrong change with the wind or with whoever is in power. This nation, along with the rest of the world, is on a collision course with God. God is watching. God is waiting for the right moment. There is a divine expiration date. There is a move, there is a moment when Jesus will return, not as a suffering savior, but as a conquering hero and as a king. Thessalonians 4 16 to 18 for the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command with the voice of the archangel with a trumpet call of God and the dead in Christ will rise first after that we who are alive and are, and, and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and so shall be we we will be with him with the Lord forever therefore encourage one another with these words. Of course, we love our country. This nation's precious to us. There's never been anything like it. That's why so many people want to come here. Of course, some of them are bent on mischief and destruction. Some of them are. Our hearts should be wrapped around God. Not the country. Not the world. Jesus came so we could have an abundant life. He set us free from the law of sin and death. All of our love and devotion belong to him. There's a pedestal in your heart that belongs only to God. The nation is not to be on that pedestal. Patriotism.
patriotism is a wonderful thing. I'm a patriot. But it's not on the, pe the pedestal that belongs to God. It's not there. We're a remnant in a wilderness of evil. God expects us to be holy. Without holiness, it says, no one will see God. It says, be holy even as I am holy. No matter what the world's standard is, we're expected to be holy. So I believe God created this nation. I do. He set it in motion. Wonderful things happened. I believe that God is watching. Sin is destroying his creation. God is waiting. What's happening while he waits? In my own lifetime, evil has increased dramatically. God is being pushed out of the culture of our land. People of faith, and this has happened in all over, not just in our land. People of faith will be vindicated. People who follow their own inclinations instead of God's law are bound for destruction. So what should we do? Well, the instructions are in that verse. Humble ourselves and pray. The land can be healed before Jesus comes. And, and guard your heart. Proverbs 4, 23 and to 27. Above all, all else, guard your heart. For everything you do flows from it. Keep your mouth free from perversity. Keep corrupt talk far from your lips. Let your eyes look straight ahead. Fix your gaze directly before you. Give careful thought to the paths for your feet and be steadfast in all your ways. Do not turn to the right or to the left. Keep your foot from evil. No matter what evil is around us, no matter what enticements come before us, we have to keep our eyes on Jesus. That's what we have to do. Humble ourselves and pray that God will turn this nation. Things are happening. But it's a remnant. It's a remnant. That's Sean, I think they pronounce his name, Fate. He's going around the capitals and attracting large crowds of people are getting saved, young people especially. There's, there's a, revivals on college campuses. Things are happening. There's an expiration date. And we will be vindicated. But we don't want to see this country destroyed. This country has a lot of problems. We, but judgment is ours because we've been murdering babies since 1973. There's judgment. There's judgment. God wins in the end. Read the end of the book. We win. But we have to struggle a little bit in the meantime. Amen? Come on down. We're going to have communion.